Hello. So today we're going to talk about a knife um, that is very interesting. Um, I don't know as much about it as I wish I did. I've looked up a lot on it. Can't find a whole lot. Um, it's a it's a fairly older knife. It, what we're going to be discussing today is a Simba by Blackjack. Um, it was a gift to me from a friend who had it for a very long time. It's in it's in basically pristine condition. There's a little bit of wear on the on the leather and things like that. Um, they are not as common as you would think, but still fairly common. Um, one can be got now for between two hundred and three hundred and fifty dollars, depending on condition, etc. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and I'll start by discussing the outside, and then we'll open it up and take a look. Um, this is actually the original sheath that it comes in. This is not um, made by someone else. Um, it's machine stitched. There is a small tie down uh, notch here, two holes knocked out for that. Um, it is a double secured, and you'll see why in a moment, and belt loop here. Uh, constructed pretty heavy uh, leather, um, dyed black. Um, it's, it looks like it was made at home. Um, but it's, it's made to pretty good standards, um, and, and it's, it's, I would have built something very similar to this for, for a different project. Um, to take it out of the sheath, you have two tabs here, one right here, that one kind of locks it in, and the other one opens up the top of the sheath because the blade is um, leaf-shaped. And if you don't open this, it won't come out. However, as you can see right in here, there's a lot of cut marks, so opening this up to take it out you can cut the sheath kind of in half, especially if it's very sharp. So that's kind of something that's not great about it. Um, just something to be aware of when you're taking it out of the of, of the, the sheath. You know, if you're fumbling around, it can be a problem. Um, I actually cut my hand the first time I did it because I didn't know if the top side was sharp. So we'll go ahead and open that up and slide out. And as you can see, it bulbs there, which is why if this flap is left over, it's going to slice it like it has. Um, but that's also why that top is left open, because of this heavy bulbing. You would have to make the sheath the entire size, and then it wouldn't fit well. So this is the Simba by Blackjack. Um, overall, about 18 inches. I think it's like 17 and 3 quarters. Um, not a very thick piece, good and sturdy. Um, as far as I can tell, it is a stainless steel, probably 440. Um... I've seen some people selling them on the web, and they're saying that it's that it's a high carbon steel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, this is stainless. Um, the finish is decent. Um, it definitely could have been finished better, but you know, not bad. The um, edges, uh, as you can see, they did a beautiful job setting that wonderful that wonderful peak right here to the point. Um, it's, it's aesthetically gorgeous. The blade geometry is we have a hollow ground um, to the sides here. And what that means is when they grind the edge, they don't just grind it like this, like a razor. They actually grind it kind of like this. So it swoops in to give you a much nicer, cleaner uh, geometry. Um, very, very good for, for cutting. The point is, once again, meeting points on these is always difficult, but they did a pretty good job. Um, it holds a decent edge. Um, right now she needs to be sharpened because I haven't fooled with it much in a while. Um, like I said, technically it's very good. Once again, the finish could have been a little nicer, but it's it's stainless steel. So getting a really mirror finish on this is kind of a bear. Um, but it holds a good edge. Um, it doesn't have much of a flex, but it does have some. That's a good thing. Um, not particularly overly thick. Um, I want to say, I don't know, may, maybe, maybe... 0.24 inch at the thickest part. Um, it is what you would call a full tang. Um, it's actually one piece of steel with um, Chiron, Chiron, Crydon um, uh, panels here. It's 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 kind of like a synthetic rubber. They're secured on with um, Allen key screws. You can see there's a little bit of rust on them. I've got to clean this thing. Um, so it's it's pretty sturdy. Um, it is balanced. You could throw it if you wanted to. She balances about. Two and a half, three inches ahead of the where the cross guard would be. Um, I am not a fan of throwing knives if it's ever avoidable, but this one is actually shaped very well for it. The lack of cross guard or finger stop is something that I wish there was more of um, because this is such a large weapon with a fairly small handle. If the handle was a little thicker, I wouldn't be so worried about slippage. 
Um, as you can see, she's shaped pretty well. Um, and it does have a good texture. Um, this is not what I would consider, um, I mean, some people call it a bush knife, whatever. I would say if you were in um, the jungle, you know, if you were using this on softer vegetation, you know, using it more like a machete, then yes, that would be great. Um, as a tool style, you know, like your general purpose machete or field knife, it's not as great because we are sharpened on both sides, so you won't, you, you're only doing one thing. Uh, when it comes to um, using this as a weapon, I would say as an actual weapon, this would be a fairly efficient um, piece. You know, you're you're looking at, um, you know, 13 inches of blade-ish there, um, which if you think of, you know, medieval or high renaissance swords, sure, that's short, but for majority of history, that's actually a pretty decent blade. I mean, it wouldn't be that much shorter than, say, your Greek Xiphos um, or something like that. Um, as, a, as a fighting weapon, I would say this is a, a very good fighting weapon. You've got both blades. Believe it or not, that point, um, other than against armor or extremely heavy clothing, would be more than enough to go in, and because of the wide cut here, you're going to get a very wide um, uh, entry wound. It's going to really slice its way in. Um, and with all that heft concentrated right about where you would actually be hacking with this, it makes it a fairly efficient hacking or slashing weapon. It's not really a slasher. It's, it's not designed for that. Um, but once again, like I said, the, the blade would work very well in a fighting situation, especially a heavy, really kind of combat where you're really laying into something. Um, think more like a, a hatchet. Uh, as to, like I said, slashing, not so great. As a tool, I mean, you wouldn't want to ruin it by digging a hole with it, but, I mean, you could. I definitely wouldn't. Um, and, like I said, the, the lack of a cross guard is kind of an issue, but also that comes to, you know, how do you balance things out. Um, I would say she's about a pound and a half, maybe two pounds. Um, eh, not quite two. Uh, maybe a pound and a half. Um, you have, like I said, you've, you've got a good breaker there for, you know, cracking walnuts or whatever. Um, but for me, carrying this as a field knife, it would be a little too much um, because it's just so large and it's so single purpose. I mean, you could do butcher work with it, but for most butcher work, once again, it's going to be too large. Um, and I don't want to use something that's this fine, this well made for, say, chopping into bone or, you know, splitting firewood. Can you? Absolutely. Would I want to? Absolutely not. It's, it's not it would be a waste in my opinion. Um, but things to look for is right here um, in front of the hilt you'll see it's the uh, blackjack and, and uh, Simba there with their little seal and on the other side it will say um, uh, and on the other side it says Effingham, Illinois, USA um, just in case there's knockoffs out there which there almost always is. Um, this is a really nice knife. Um, it definitely holds an edge, definitely sharp. Uh, the blade geometry is beautiful. I mean, as you can see, it, it shines very well in the light. Everything was, whoever crafted these did a fantastic job of bringing everything together perfectly. It's very nicely done. Um, I think the sheath, once again, that's that's the best kind of sheath you're going to get for a blade shape like this. Um, and it was well executed. It's utilitarian, but that's what it's made to be. It's not made to be fancy. Um, the blade itself, like I said, you don't have any fancy cross guards and anything like that, which once again, I would like a little bit more something to keep my hands from slipping. But on the other hand, that would also make it um, bulkier. It would, it would definitely make the lines a little wider and uh, would also give something more to go wrong. With this, you can't go wrong. You got, you know, six set screws and some panels. There's, there's nothing really to break on this, which is another good thing in a knife. There's nothing to break. That's cool. Um, like I said, as, as a fighting weapon, this would be superior to uh, a lot of knives of, of its same size. Um, as to weight, like I said, carrying in the field would be kind of heavy. Getting it out of the sheath without cutting up the sheath or cutting yourself can be kind of a problem. Um, so that's that would be a downside, a reason why I would not carry this in the field if there were other options. Um, but if you come across one, you know, and you've got $300 to spend and you like this kind of stuff, I'd go for it. Um, it's, it's a wonderful little piece. Uh, if you have one, I'd love to hear about it. Um, this, I mean, I've, I've put my hand on maybe two of them um, in, in my life. They're, they're wonderful, and I, and I really, they're, they're kind of fun to, to play around with. As you can see, I, I can't help but like flash it around here in the light. 
Um, but if you've got any comments, questions, or if there's something you know I don't know, or if you want to know more about it, please leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, thank you.